there is something that is common to all men. The moment they sleep, the herbalist must, be, must receive grace to wake up to continue what he's doing. I lay me down and I slept. The psalmist said, I waked for the Lord. Waking people is exclusive, is exclusively the, the, the prerogative and the office of God. No devil anywhere, I can tell you that. So when people act as if they have your destiny in their hand, tell them, make sure you don't sleep. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. By tomorrow, if you are still there, call me another name. Hey, be careful. Be careful because the sun is going down. Be careful. Mm. Very arrogant world that forgets that there is a God that rules over the affairs of men. Have you forgotten Nebuchadnezzar? A man who believed that he had everything, the entire globe in his hand, and he could manipulate the destinies of men. And he said, make the fiery furnace seven times hotter. And they threw those young boys there on account of their trust and their belief in Jesus. They said, we're not taught to dishonor authority, but as touching this one, we're not careful to tell you, our God will deliver us. But even if he does not deliver us, we count him faithful. And they saw the fourth man in the fire. Hallelujah. Now, I don't know if they themselves saw the fourth man. Because the Bible does not seem to record that they themselves saw the fourth man. We know that the man who saw the fourth man was the king himself and the other people. All we know is that they believed that the fire had no power over them. The faith was on their own part. Because they were not, they didn't have to see the fourth man to enter the fire. And most likely while they were in the fire, they probably did not see the fire. You see, when you are walking by faith, usually it is those who are the onlookers who will be seeing the marvelous things that God is doing. You just know you are obeying God. You are in that fire and you are walking that fire out. You are in that den of lions and yet it has no power waiting who will not enter the fire when you see the fourth man already waiting it is easy to give when you have an alert of 10 million in your account then you smuggle out 1000 and say God you see what I gave you is that really faith that is charity are we together it's a true faith Abel offered how about Abraham? I will make you a father of many nations. No evidence. No Isaac. And the Bible tells us as in the order of men and women, he had become very old. And Sarah, even, even when she had gone past as in the manner of women, the Bible says, and yet they counted God faithful. You find that in Romans chapter 4. That he wavered not. I like Abraham. He wavered not. Please find that scripture for me. Romans 4 and verse Look for it. Verse, I don't know what verse that is now. That he counted God faithful. Are we together? He considered not the deadness of Sarah's womb. Are we together? Verse 20. Thank you. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith. In fact, back down, go to 18. 18. It says, who against hope? Did you see that? The foundation of faith is that there is hopelessness already. Hopelessness against hope, believed in hope. That he might become the father. Imagine if you saw Abraham, 90 years. Abraham, how are you? And he says, I'm still holding on to God's word. And you say, Abraham, you are still at this madness called Christianity. I know he spoke to me. It's not a lie. And he himself will go to God and say, God, why are you doing this to me? Seeing that I go childless. Okay, here is Eliezer in my house. You somebody in my house who respects me to have children for me. And God says, no, it will come from you. It does not just pay to serve Jesus. It pays to believe him. I don't know what he's told you. I don't know what he's told your family. I don't know what he said concerning your health, concerning your ministry. He saw the prevailing circumstances when he said it, and he does not plan to change what he has said. 
It's up to you to believe his report. Hear me. At every point in your Christian experience, you will be, you will be met by at least two conflicting reports. The reports of men, the reports of ill health, the report of society, the report of the present day economy, globally speaking. Or whose report, God's report, the integrity of God as captured in scripture. You're a man of God. Yeah, apostle, where will the bills come from? You are a parent. School fees has been increased multiple folds. Rent increased multiple fold. Hear me? The message for you here is hold on. God is still as faithful as you've known him to be. Don't allow negative situations. So this is how my life will be. I thought by now a job would have come. I want you to still hold on. In the name of Jesus, the devil is a liar. I thought by now the health. I, 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 I prayed, I submitted my prayer request and I thought by now I'll be free. I want you to count him faithful. Count him faithful. You're not the first to go through what you're going through. He's called faithful and true. Please sit down. You want to command greater works? Man of God, waiting for a destiny helper to bring all the money for you be before you begin to pray and plan to have the building. You will never build anything in your whole life. Hmm. Start writing the budget with zero naira in your account. Start. It's an act of faith. Are we together? Be careful about this over this scientific approach to Christianity. Now, science is important. I just acknowledge science. But over dependence on intellect can rob you of an opportunity to walk by faith. Can I tell you, no matter what you are getting from God, no matter how cheap it is, if it is God that will be the giver, faith must be required. Faith. God will route you through a path that will that will demand that you believe him so he says follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise he says and abraham after he had patiently endured he obtained the promise is someone learning we must obtain grace to walk by faith anything god tells me i believe him i don't wait until i see any evidence i believe him koinonia is a great nation i believe him you are going to raise mighty men after the order of Genesis 17 and verse 6. This is what God told me and I believe with all my heart. Genesis 17, 6. I will make thee exceeding fruitful and I will make nations of thee and kings shall come out of thee. This is what God told me. He didn't say it yesterday. He didn't say it last year. He didn't say it 10 years ago. Waiting until you see the evidence. You will only waste your time and not walk by faith. Dare to believe God. Dare to obey God. Dare to act in keeping with what he has told you. And watch the God of wonder. The God of wonder arise for you. Every testimony you see shared here is the end point of the journey of faith. The end point of the journey of faith. Usually when you start, you start with nothing except what God has said. The raw material for your destiny essentially is the word of God. If he has said it, it's sufficient to start the journey. The same word that caused you to begin the journey will keep the things you need somewhere in your path. If you never take the step, you will not meet what you need in the journey. What you need for the journey will not be given at the point you start. Uh-uh. The only thing that will be given at the point of the journey is the Holy Spirit and the Word. That is sufficient for the journey. And you start one step after the other. Falling down but standing up. Getting up. Oh God, what is this? I don't understand you. You promised me that you're going to take care of me. You asked me to come down to Abuja. Now I'm in Abuja. It's been six months. I don't even know where my next meal will come from. And you hear a word from the Spirit while you are praying. Turn your pain. Turn everything you're going through to praise. I am giving you a testimony that will bless people tomorrow. And in the midst of your tears, you may not know what to do. And you are taking the time to pray and say, Lord, I still count you faithful. I thought by now a job will come. I thought by now destiny, 
many helpers would have arrived. But I say thank you. Can I tell you, when you thank God in the midst of storms, you really have faith. When you thank God in the midst of your result, that is praise report. But when you are thanking God when you have not seen anything, Hallelujah. Learn to thank him. We live in a world that prides in complaining. God, you have not done this. You gave me tea, no bread. How am I, how am I supposed to take it? And God says, you just keep thanking me and taking the tea with gratitude and bread will arrive. The force of faith. Let's hurry up. Number four. Are you ready for the fourth force? Is God helping someone here? Am I speaking to people who will begin to manifest greater works by the Spirit in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God? Are you ready for force number four? The force of wealth and abundance. Please write. The fourth force that is responsible for commanding greater works is the force of wealth and abundance. Mm. Zechariah 1.17 The force of wealth and and abundance cry yet saying for saith the Lord of hosts my cities through prosperity shall be spread abroad and the Lord shall yet comfort Zion and shall choose Jerusalem scripture number two Deuteronomy 8 18 but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God Hear what the Bible says. For it is he, not it is it. It is he that giveth the power to get wealth. That he may establish his covenant, which he swear unto thy fathers, as it is this day. Can I tell you, wealth from time immemorial has always played a major role in shaping civilization, promoting evil, or promoting righteousness. Let me repeat myself again. That wealth and abundance from time immemorial has played a unique role of promoting, shaping civilizations, promoting evil, or promoting good. When you see evil in a society and a territory, behind the ever-increasing decadence of any society is wealth playing a role, a wrong role. When you see advancement and civilization of any sort in any society, behind it, there is wealth playing its role. When you see the purposes of God being advanced from place to place, behind it, there is wealth playing its role. Either ways, whether you want to promote evil or promote good, wealth is a tool that must be present and evident. I have learned from scripture, and I can tell you sincerely by experience that the absence of financial resources will cripple your life, will cripple your destiny, will cripple the program of God. Let me show you a scripture that might interest you. Matthew 28, let's go to Matthew 28 from verse 1. At the end of the Sabbath, watch this, as it began to dawn towards the first day of the week, this is the resurrection morning, Mary Magdalene and Mary... And the other Mary came to see the sepulchre. Verse 2. And behold, the Bible says, there was a great earthquake for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. 3. It says his countenance was like lightning and his raiment was white as snow. It says, and for fear of him, watch this now, the keepers, the guards that were put around the grave, the Bible says they did shake and they became as dead men. Five, it says, and the angel answered and said unto the women, fear not, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. Uh -huh. He is not here, for he is risen, hallelujah, as he said. He says, come, see the place where the Lord lay. Seven, and go quickly, the angel is giving them an instruction by God. Tell his disciples. So the angel is saying, listen, don't keep quiet about the fact that he's risen. Announce it that he's risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth forth before you into Galilee, and ye shall see him as I have told you. Verse 8. And they gathered, they departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy, and did run to bring his disciples' word. 9. 
And as they went to tell his disciples, watch this. The Bible says, behold, Jesus met them. And he said, all hail. And they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Ten. And then said Jesus unto them, be not afraid. Jesus is now mandating them. Go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee and there they shall meet me. 11, reading to 15. It says, now when they were going, behold, watch this. Some of the watch came into the city and showed unto the chief priests all the things that were done. That means those who were at the sepulcher, right? The guards, they came and told the chief priests, listen, we witnessed something spectacular. We saw an angel came, was not a vision. He rolled away the stone with great power. And the Bible says, when, verse 12, and when they were assembled with the elders, when the chief priests heard this, they said, wow. They knew the truth. They knew the guards were not lying. But the Bible says they assembled themselves together. Look carefully and had to take counsel. And they gave what? Large money unto the soldiers. They called the soldiers and said, come, this resurrection, if the whole city knows it, they will be obedient to the faith. This is literally going to bring an end to a civilization and start another. But we are going to do something. Take large amount of money. And with that money, here is the instruction, 13. Say this, that his disciples came by night. You see how powerful money is? Say his disciples came by night and stole him away while we slept, 14. And if this come to the governor's ears, don't worry. Because it will get to the governor. Don't be afraid that you say you were sleeping. We will have a way of covering you. He says we will persuade him and secure you. So they took the money. What did they do with the money? They took the money because they had wives and children. They had bills to pay. And instead of the 10, 10 naira salary, now a large amount of money just to lie. Who is the Jesus relative to my children's school fees? Who is that Jesus relative to my wife's trouble that I'm looking for 10,000 naira? Now you bring me 20 million just to make a little lie and say he did not resurrect with speed. Give me. Are you seeing, number one, if those guys were bad people, they would not even come to report it. They came because the thing troubled them. It was from a standpoint of conviction. Conviction is at the mercy of prosperity to be stabilized, to be guaranteed. Your conviction will shake like a leaf if you are not empowered. One moment they come and they are saying the truth. And they say, come, 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 come. We have to announce that he is not risen. Let's finish that scripture. When they were assembled, 13, let's go to 13 media. Okay, and it says, saying to the disciples that they came and stole him, 14 now. It says, and if this come to the governor's ears, we will persuade him and secure you. Read verse 15, please. Ready? One, two, read. So they took the money and did as they were taught. And this saying is commonly reported among the Jews until this day. Longevity of lies promoted by money. That there are people who went to hell today now. There are people who are in hell because a group of people paid to make sure they don't get life. Do you know Satan is still paying people today to say Jesus is not risen? There are many people, many of our children across the globe today learning all kinds of things sponsored by the abundance of financial resources. I will repeat it one more time for your hearing koinonia that the name of Jesus is very heavy. It takes financial resources to lift it high so that the nations will see. Out of all the strategies to stop the manifestation of the name of Jesus, Satan decided to choose the issue of finance. Please do not downplay it. I was teaching the workers and also our school of ministry students that when you remain in abject poverty, three things must happen to you. One, you must steal. Two, you must tell lies. Three, you must borrow. One of these three things Usually all three will eventually happen to you if you are poor. It has nothing to do with whether you are good or bad. 
it is the consequence of not being empowered economically. For instance, if you don't have the money to pay your rent, even if you're a sincere prayer warrior, chances are excellent that when your wife and your children are about to be kicked out of the house, you wouldn't know when you will beg your wife to say, please, tell them I traveled. I will tell God sorry later on, but for now. And you will feel bad, and yet you will repeat it again. The bondage that poverty puts men, it will take God to open your eyes to see it. I have told you that every time we advocate wealth and abundance is from a pro-kingdom standpoint. Don't approach it from a carnal, mundane standpoint, just fueling lust. This is not what we're teaching. But I can tell you that among the many tools that must be present in your life, first to live a life of dignity, then to advance the purposes of God, and then to fulfill Genesis 12, 3, that in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. You will not be able to do greater works if you lack resources. That is the truth. The force of wealth and abundance. I used to watch the great crusades of Reinhard Bonke, the great crusades of Billy Graham, and they would pack stadiums. And I know that usually when we watch those crusades, the central point is just Billy Graham coming, but you need to have an understanding of the budgets. Are we together now? By the privilege of God's grace and by reason of what I do, I can tell you that it takes serious amount of money to do anything meaningful for the kingdom. Souls are expensive. It takes resources to bring them to the cross. The gospel is free, they say, but the means to take it to the lost is not free. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Takes a lot. There are many people today who have relevant teachings, messages that can shape the body of Christ, can help us come into a greater level of stature and understanding, but they cannot publish those works because they are incapacitated financially. Am I right on that? There are many parents today who have been given the responsibility of raising the next apostles and prophets, and they know by the Spirit that God already told them that your child is going to be a mighty tool before I return. But to take that child to a good mission school, a responsible school where he can be prepared for destiny. They want to do so, but they do not have the resources to make it happen. It is terrible to know what to do and still be limited because of finances. I'm praying for you in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, that which limits men, incapacitates men financially and makes your life a representation of mockery and shame. May it live your life from tonight. Hallelujah. Please be seated. I've done several teachings on finance. I want you to lay hold of them and listen. One of them you may want to pay attention to is the series, The Power to Get Wealth. I want you to settle down. I'm not teaching on finance. I'm just introducing it as one of the irrefutable forces that is responsible for greater works. Can I tell you, when money enters the hand of a man, whose heart loves God and who has wisdom and vision, you will watch the wonder of kingdom advance through that person. Let me repeat myself. When money, financial resources, enter the hands of a man whose heart is passionately in love with God and who has wisdom and vision, you will watch how far he will take the program of God. There are many visionary people today, great people, but are limited, limited financially, limited financially. This vision is excelling today by the privilege of God's grace because there is a mandate from God. There are faithful and wonderful workers, but I tell you sincerely, I'm speaking to the whole world and you know this is true. What you see is also riding on the wings of huge financial resources. Without financial resources, there are many, many things that will not come to pass. Hallelujah. It takes money to raise your children properly. It takes money to make a choice of a good school that you can be sure of what they are learning, especially in this wicked world today. Are we together? Education has become so expensive, globally speaking. 
And that includes our nation. And I'm telling you, I, I don't mean to make you feel bad, but have you sampled children and see the difference in their understanding as a result of a good school and a bad school. I greet, I'm always around children and sometimes my heart breaks because you will see a child of four, five, six years old who has had the privilege of being mentored by parents that God has helped financially and they've provided that leverage. And then you see other children with a heart that is sincere. You know there is destiny in these children. But you see that because probably their parents or their guidance were incapacitated financially, the difference in intelligence, the difference in acumen, the difference in understanding is clear. And these poor children will grow with low self-esteem. That's why they start joining cult by age 13. Since they are intellectually weak, they will want to join a cult or a group where the person can now become a capon. If I don't have understanding, at least let me have the ability to kill. Do you know that consult with any military personality and they will tell you most of the terrorists that inflict mayhem in this nation and across the nations, most of them are from teenagers into their mid-twenties. How many old people have the strength to do all these kind of things? It takes strength to serve even the devil. And the devil will not make do with people who are too weak and cannot be effective. And so he goes, he literally looks for a demography, an age range, and captures them. But in the name of Jesus, we are here on a mission to redeem all that the devil has plucked. That the devil has chained families, chained breadwinners, chained destiny helpers using the tool of poverty. He has programmed it to even be transgenerational so that all the disciplined, godly, serious, young men in certain families they never get to rise until you fraternize with him and meet a herbalist then you find out irresponsible people now begin to rise I'm praying for you every chain of poverty that has held your life held your children in the name of he who died and rose again may it be broken now and forever <laughs> hallelujah With prosperity, when prosperity mixes with wisdom and vision, it does much for the kingdom. When prosperity meets with a carnal heart, a careless mind, a visionless destiny, an irresponsible personality, it becomes a detriment to kingdom come, a detriment to kingdom advance. There is no fear as to opening your heart to receive prosperity when you know your heart is right with God. Are we together now? Because it becomes an advantage. I look forward to times where God will raise certain strategic kingdom financiers. That there will be a group of men who will set up a company with the principal reason to fund the kingdom. Because they are so blessed, they don't need anything as far as their personal gains are concerned. That they literally build companies and corporations and many will come out of this vision in the name of Jesus Christ. Literally, that they will sit down in board meetings and they are not just talking about sharing profits. They are saying, okay, there is a crusade about to happen there. How much? 10 million naira. Let it go there. I hear that there is some missionaries. They need to translate Bibles to Hausa and translate to French. 10 million naira. Let this one go for the kingdom. I hear that there is some missionary that has been kidnapped somewhere. And I hear that um, his wife and children are grounded. No food. Please send a, a million naira. Imagine living a life like that and heaven is watching you and saying, who is this ambassador representing my purposes this much? This is the assignment of money. Not I have a jeep, I have a car, I have houses. Thank God for those things. But we are people who have been trained to love God more than that. Hallelujah. Imagine one of you here that God gives you a vision to raise 100 children from primary school till university because you want them to love the Lord. You handpick them and God tells you, this lady you are seeing, this is Esther forming, this is Elijah forming, this is Daniel forming. Give them a chance. It's not their fault that their parents died. It's not their fault that their parents are idol worshippers. The parents will say, well, my child will worship the devil, but if you can pay for his school fees, carry him as a liability. And you say, no problem, bring him to me.
Tell me who will ignore you when you go to a community and build 50 boreholes in the name of Jesus. 50 represented, 100 boreholes. And say, this community, do you, read the history of the church in Nigeria and revivals in Nigeria. Those who came with the gospel also came with benefits that improved the lives of people. And because of that, they were, the, the communities were at the mercy of the permission that their kings will give them. And because of the benevolence, the kings will usually have a meeting and say, this day, I stand as a king over this community. And I declare that as a community, we will serve the Lord. And every other person follows suit. 